So what's best, a bait runner reel or a quick drag reel? A bait runner is any reel that you can quickly switch for, between two different drag settings. That's from the playing setting to the bait runner setting. This is a typical example of a classic uh, Shimano bait runner reel, the ST6000. I've got a switch on the back here and that switch is on, that switch is off and it will also switch from one to the other with half a turn of the handle. With the bait runner off, it's difficult to turn the clutch, but when I adjust the rear drag, the playing drag, we've got some loosening there. So that's the setting that we play a fish on. In bait runner mode, goes from there to there, we're on the free spool facility, and that spool spinning around very, very easily. With this ring here, I can tighten that up, but it still turns fairly easily, so it's nowhere near locked up even at that. Bait runner reels are very popular for carp angling. I started with them back in the day, 20 years ago, when I got back into the sport. I think I used some Shimano 8000 GTBs, a classic old reel and a good kind of get you going reel. Bait runner reels are good for a lightweight setup, which might not be very sturdy. If you're using a pod, if you haven't got gripping rear butt rests, and you, know, you just want to let the clutch go and spin without fear of losing the rod when you do get a take, then bait runners are great. Because of the switch on the back, you can quickly look down and double check that, yeah, you've definitely put the bait runner on and you're not going to get a fast take and, and lose your rod. On the bait runner setting, it's on the sticks, ready, waiting for the take, and fish picks up and he's going to tear off with a bait and it's just going to spin around like that. And it's great, your rod's not going to get uh, dragged in and you're still going to be able to control the fish. The downside of a bait runner reel is that you go from a free spool setting, so fish running away like that, to one click and then we're on a clutch playing setting. I'm having to pull quite hard here in order to take any line and that happens very quickly. So you go from free spool to playing clutch in an instant and you can often bump fish off because of this quick switch. Bait runner reels when you're talking about small spool sizes like this 6000 uh, that's fine that's cool you know the, the body isn't too big there's not too much weight there the problem comes if you want to keep the bait runner facility on a bigger format reel because the whole thing becomes a bit large. After I've been carp fishing for a few years with these little bait runner reels, I wanted to fish bigger waters and I knew I needed to use uh, larger reels to be able to cast further. I bought a pair of these, which are the old classic Shimano LCs. They weigh an absolute ton, but they are absolute carp winches. Uh, I think they weigh about a kilo each. Massive great things. You've got the free spool facility, which then switches to a quick drag with one turn of the handle. Very well built, very solid, but large and very heavy. Back in the day, I think I paired these with some 2.75 pound uh, Gray's Prodigy rods. The whole thing was completely unbalanced. The rods were too soft, the reels were too heavy, and it really didn't work for me. If you want to do long distance casting, then big heavy bait runner reels like this are not a great choice. Small bait runner reels like this are the perfect partner for short rods. You know, the eight, nine, 10 foot type of rod. The other option for carp reels are quick drag reels. This is an example of a really small quick drag reel. So that's in free spool at the moment. And then half a turn and he's fully locked up. A quarter turn back and that's a nice comfortable playing setting. The advantage of quick drag reels over bait runner reels is size. You can have the same spool capacity in a lot smaller format and a lot less weight. So these are very similar. This is a 6,000 capacity spool. This is a 4,000 capacity spool. Yeah, so they're not directly comparable, but they're pretty close. And you can see that there is a massive difference between the size. There's also a huge difference in the weight of these two reels as well. I partnered this BP4 with a little Nash Dwarf sawn off. Only six foot rod, two pound test curve very lightweight, not designed to cast very far, but it's meant for close quarters fishing. Because this BP4 hardly weighs anything, 
it's perfectly balanced on this little six foot rod. This is an example of a full size big pick quick drag reel. This is the Shimano 14000 XTC and it's sat here on a little dwarf rod and you might think well surely that's a massive reel for uh, such a short rod but you know it's only a little nine foot rod but because it's so light and compact actually it sits really well it's just balancing it on one finger there very very nice and the rod feels like nothing in your hand it's a beautiful combination i didn't think it would work but actually it does so there we go in fully locked up quarter of a turn back and that's a plain setting or a semi-tight setting and then another quarter turn and we're into full free spool. The advantage of large quick drag reels like this is that you get big size spools and with low diameter line you can cast this an absolute mile. Even with a nine foot rod you can cast this setup 90 yards with a baited rig yeah. which I didn't think was actually going to be possible but it is. And I'm not the best caster, there's plenty of guys that can cast an awful lot farther than me. So back to our original question of what is the best reel for carp fishing. Well, I back in the day I started off with the bait runner and then I eventually moved over to quick drag. But I think if I was starting out today, I'd just recommend that you go straight for a quick drag. The reason why I like a quick drag reel is that I can have a different amount of tension for every single setup. I might have one on a snag tree and I want that fully locked up so I'll dial that in on the front clutch. Uh, I might have one in open water uh, and I'll have that on a, on a semi-fixed setup. Yeah, you need the rigidity in your setup to be able to fish semi-tight but if you can do it you're going to catch more fish because it's like an auto strike system. They're on and they're being played before you've even put your shoes on. For me, for carp fishing, there's no real advantage to a bait runner. I don't want the spool spinning away because the carp's not working, he's not being better hooked, he's just you know, running where he wants to in an uncontrolled fashion and that's never a good idea. If I meet guests with bait runner reels, normally what I advise is that they actually don't use the bait runner system and just dial the rear drag to you know, be semi semi locked up while it's on the rest and you know wind down into the fish and you haven't got this transition between being a, a loose clutch to a tight clutch and I've seen a number of times when guests have done that and oh it's on for a few seconds and the fish is gone they've bumped them off because of this aggressive transition of the clutch setting. I just want to show you what happens if you don't have rear grip in butt rest and you forgot to switch your bait runner on. So that's off at the moment. And cart's gonna pull your rod in, no problem at all. So if you don't have rear gripping butt rest, it's really important to engage the bait runner facility so you can just free spool it like that. So these little nine foot dwarfs have got this built-in collar here. And what that's designed to do is actually become a backstop so I've just closed down this is a solar p1 uh, long-eared snag ears and if I close that down so it fits the butt perfectly that collar comes up against there and that rod is absolutely solid there's no way that that is getting pulled in even if I lock it up no there's there's no way that's going anywhere so really solid secure setup exactly the same setup with a big big pit quick drag reel. Uh, I've adjusted the snag ears again. We've got that locked in there, that's completely locked up and that is going absolutely nowhere. I wouldn't fish it like that unless I really had to, but kind of semi-tight, you know, it's still going to be able to pay off some line, but it's really going to do a great job of controlling the fish. And that's how I fish virtually all of the time everywhere I go. Once I'm happy with the clutch setting, I'll always just pop the line up into the line clip. So I use the line clip to give the fish uh, an additional hit. It helps hook them better. So it pings up the clip, bonk, and then we're on the clutch. And if it needs to pay line, it will. But he's gonna have to work to take line. If I go from fully locked up, back half a turn, that's on free spool facility, which is great if you need to fish like that. So although I can go from a fully locked up to quick drag in just half a turn, 
I never use the full free spool facility. I've never come across an angling situation where it's better to be fishing with full free spool versus a semi-tight clutch. I just think it hooks the carp better and I'll get very few hook pulls. For more details on how to achieve the perfect rod setup, watch this video.